So I met up with the missionaries and you know I feel like it was a good speech. I met up with them multiple times. I'm always a student. I'm always learning. I'm very selective when I'm learning and I make sure who I'm learning from in the first place. I will not be receptive to people who offer blah 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 because a lot of people are one page individuals meaning they have one page for life and they have minimal knowledge in everything and they have a one page response and their egos are boosted through the roof and they believe they know it all. I have come to terms and realized that the more I seem to know, I understand that I know nothing. I feel like the more knowledge and the more wisdom that I gather, reset to where I know absolutely nothing. And maybe that's me changing into a new perspective to where I'm understanding more and then I'm gaining ground from that place. But that's one thing I notice. I feel like, okay, I've got it all figured out. I understand what's going on. I feel like when you get too much advice or you learn too much, it all just cancels out. <laughs> but so anyways, these missionaries, they came over and it was nice to just be around like-minded and individual. When it comes to my relationship with God, I like to keep it mostly between me and myself. The church is me, my spirit, and God. I don't have to be surrounded by a bunch of people who believe in Jesus because one thing I notice about the churches is they just don't have like the oof, the fire for God. Like they don't ride with God like that. Like a lot of them, they just don't have that spirit. Like you go to the churches and it's spiritually dead. It's literally spiritually dead and that's not what God's about. God wants his people to be strong, to be lions and that's what it should be I feel like the churches nowadays they cave in and they sugarcoat the Bible to please society so they can fit in people ain't defending it people ain't standing ten toes down the Quran nobody disrespects that but a lot of people disrespect the Bible which got me thinking if there is evil which there definitely is just look at the world it would definitely attack good right and Christianity is one of the most mocked laughed at scoffed at religions in the world and it really makes you think I mean if there is bad and there is good. Naturally, the bad would attack the good. The more you do rock with God, you will start to realize that in your own life. And that kind of just builds your faith even more. You spiritually become more acute to the things that are going on around you and you have a sharper eye. And you start to realize that, yeah, there is spiritual things going on, a spiritual warfare that's always been going on. I mean, John F. Kennedy, who was a Catholic, he was with the Vatican and he was going to bring, like, Christianity to the state, power, bring that religion to the forefront. And he got shot in the head. In this case, a very easy remedy. And that is to pray ourselves. Pray a good deal more at home. We can attend our churches with a good deal more uh, fidelity. And uh, we can make the true meaning of prayer much more important in the lives of all of our children. That power is very much open to us. And you can see it throughout the whole world. Literally everything in the Bible I've noticed, once you start reading it and you really start applying the principles and the morals and you see what it's all about, you realize that everything in this world is actually the opposite. Everything it says in the Bible, this world is the exact opposite. Quite scary, but this world does belong to Satan, like I was saying previously. And that's why in the Bible it says not to be of this world. Don't be worldly. And that means don't do what these people are doing. Don't attach yourself to these temptations, to these worldly desires to material possessions or stuff of this nature. I just want to break down how everything in this world goes against the Bible. Like there's so many things I could literally speak for 24 hours. First of all, it says pride is a sin. It says in the Bible that God hates prideful, egotistical people. And I mean social media influencers, they promote that out the ass. They're just so egotistical. Like it's such a stomp on you, stomp on the next person, cold, heartless society where it's just all ego and that's the only way to make it. So that has been promoted heavily. It says Pride is a sin. And now we're promoting Pride Month every single month. Like the people in those parades are complete degenerate. They're trying to normalize this wicked stuff and you see what's going on and it's like naked men in front of children. And they're trying to normalize it. And trying to threaten everybody to support this thing to where it's a fear-based thing that's just been put into place to where people don't really want to talk about it because they're afraid. But the things that are going on, implementing this in school, and first of all, it says in the Bible that a man and a woman should be together. There you go. Pretty simple. And Baphomet is a transgender, which is also also pretty crazy. He had tits and he had a dick because Satan is the master of confusion. He wants to twist everything and distort everything that God has created. So everything in this world is twisted and distorted to the way that God has made it in many aspects. This world calls sheep a bad thing, like, oh, they're just following the crowd. But in the Bible, it says my followers are sheep. The people who follow God are actually sheep. And in this world, we normalize saying the word goat. And the goat is Baphomet. So greatest of all time, oh, I'm the goat. I'm the greatest. I'm the goat. That's also backwards. Just the morals and 
and the principles and also lust like that's a huge sin in the Bible because when you are trapped in lust first and foremost it confuses you it ruins your clarity it knocks you off your purpose you don't operate in your spirit you operate in flesh now the difference between your spirit and your flesh your flesh is your physical and when you are leading by flesh you are not leading with wisdom you are being dragging off track you are giving into temptations desires women lustful thoughts you are off the path you are off your purpose and you are going into these demonic roads where a you're gonna feel shitty about yourself you jerk off you feel like trash your spirit is literally drained you are depleting yourself second of all you follow lust and you go into some physical relationship and that's all it is with the wrong female who will probably gossip about you probably cheat on you she probably has 10 guys in her phone will probably backstab you will probably leave your heart bleeding will literally just distract you from your purpose distract you from what you've got going on in life and drag you down a miserable path and then once you reclaim your power as a man hopefully you smarten up and you come back to your path the Bible says only a fool will follow a seductive woman it's a trap it's literally a trap you do not want your soul attached to these women you have sex with the woman you are creating a soul tie meaning you are attached to this woman emotionally spiritually you become one flesh you become one person so if it's the wrong person and you hop in bed with a demon or a chick who is literally there to destroy your life that could be it you could get this chick pregnant I've been in crazy circumstances in my life with females I was just basing it off lust oh yeah she's hot so I'm gonna go with her and bro so many wrong things happened in that relationship and I'm lucky that I got the grace of God to leave I'll give you one for example I'm just gonna be completely honest and open this chick was saving my semen in a jar without my consent without anything and she was literally trying to you know so that's crazy and that was based off lust now there's a lot of other things in the world is only going into a more progressively crazier state to where you don't know what's going on behind the scenes with these entities so stay away from lust it's deeper than you think porn is free you could be literally six years old as a man and you could give into it and now you are a slave to your flesh you are not disciplined in your spirit you can't control yourself as a man and that's your power and that's what the Bible does it allows you to have discipline to have control of your life to be in power to be yourself to be steering the wheel and not be drug off course by all these sins and these distractions sins are pitfalls and traps by Satan that's pretty much what a sin is the Bible is there to protect you it's like a spiritual sword that can weave through all these things and it gives you discernment on who you should be around who you shouldn't be around and it's just a spiritual edge that everybody needs in their life a lot of Christians they sugarcoat this stuff and they keep it away so they can fit into society and it waters down the Bible but this stuff is really powerful first and foremost it says Satan is the devourer of souls he is a lion waiting to devour souls and when you look in this world there are so many people who have been devoured like there is a constant 24 7 attack on your psyche if you are not vigilant if you are not sober-minded like it says in the Bible meaning taking care of yourself feeding your mind with the right things in your spirit you will be devoured and that's what you see with a lot of people they're anxious they're depressed they're all types of messed up every negative emotion and negative is the opposite of positive so what does that mean it's evil okay there's good there's evil there's negative there's positive so you're on the opposite side of the spectrum because you're open up to these attacks because you're spiritually don't have the wherewithal to know how to fight these and how to protect yourself and how you can do that you could just look at it as like hey I want to fix my mental health and start off from there in the Bible it says I will renew your mind and everybody needs a renewal of the mind how you can do that is just watch what you feed your mind stop listening to the matrix BS like I don't care if it sounds friendly if it's some TV show some scary movie everything that they have designed is there to plant a seed and the reason everybody is down and out in this society is because they're all tapped in and watching the same thing and that's why they all feel the same way so if you want to be different if you want to be the opposite if you want to be strong if you want to feel like yourself if you want to be purpose filled and based then step away from the crowd because you don't want to be with them. You want to protect your mind. You want to protect your body. You want everything working in a cohesive fashion where everything is working as one. If you have a sharp mind, you want a sharp body because your body produces the energy. And you could have a sharp mind, but if you don't have a sharp body and you have garbage food inside of it, you're not going to have the energy to perform the action. So you want everything in one. You want to be sharp in all areas. You want to take care of yourself. This is your temple. And you want to be a fully optimized individual in every single aspect so you have the edge on life. So you can stand the trial so you don't fall in these pitfalls. You don't have a flimsy, weak mind that's just gonna give in when something wrong happens. But yeah, it's just gonna progressively get worse with the more stuff that they're promoting. And Satan is the master of confusion. So if you keep tapping into what they are feeding, your mind is gonna be in loops. So they have these gender-free bathrooms. Everything is just swapped and distorted and don't know what's going on, what's right, what's left, what's down. Like everything just has to be complex. Opposite of what it naturally should be to where it's foreign. And that's why there is a lot of confusion. If you wanna protect
protect yourself and save yourself. Really watch what you are putting into your mentality. Every area you turn, wherever you're pivoting, make sure that you are putting the stuff that you need in your mind to go to the place that you want to go in life. If you have a purpose or you have a dream or you want to feel a certain kind of way, you want to be happy, you want to be this, you want to be that, then program yourself to be that way. Protect your mind. Be selective with what you watch, what you hear in all aspects and what you eat. Take care of your full self so you can be disciplined in yourself, so you can be in control because there's nothing stronger than a man who is disciplined, who doesn't give in to these worldly temptations, who is in control of his emotions. They're teaching men nowadays to be emotional, to let your emotions show, to cry when you want to cry, to be angry when you want to be angry, to be pissed off when you want to be pissed off. Being emotional is so dangerous as a man. If I was just angry and I was like, hey, I'm angry, like I'm just going to lash out, go with my emotions and let my emotions feel my actions because I want to punch somebody out, I'm going to go and do that. That is so dangerous. You know how many relationships I have ruined or how many things I have said that were wrong that I regretted later because I was angry and I went with my emotions? There is no strength in that. That is utter weakness and it's just a lack of control. You are a slave to your mind. You cannot control your emotions. You can't bite your tongue and that is a weak mind. A mind that lashes out and can't control himself or contain himself in any regard or any aspect is just a weak, fragile mind because I can control you. You know, if I can make you tick, I can control you. If I can get this emotion out of you, oh, I can make you angry and I can make you go in that direction. And if there's a government that really wants to control you, oh, we just gotta make them angry. We gotta make them emotional so we can move them in this And you know, I could tap buttons to control. That's one thing I've been working on is just being in control of my emotions because there's a lot of times in my life, whether it's with family or certain people where I am angry and I realize the best thing for me to do is just to let it slide and to let that anger absorb. So it's not a habit because the more you feed into an energy, the more prominent it becomes. And the more you master that emotion and you don't give into it as much, the more it dissipates. True with every emotion. The more you feed into that pendulum, the more it's going to occur. So when you're angry, you don't want to be lashing out. You want to keep that to yourself and you want to keep it under wraps. And as a man, you got to stay in control of your emotions. And that's just another advancement you got to make in your spiritual journey. The Bible is so great because it has all these sins that it wants you to overcome. It's to discipline your spirit, to discipline your mind. Like overcoming lust, overcoming gluttony, overeating, being able to fast for your God. Doing these things instills discipline. I'm in control. My spirit is in control. My body, my flesh is not in control. I mean, that is powerful. The more you feed into the word of God, the more powerful you do become in oneself. Like you want to be with a good, honest woman who doesn't give you a headache. If you really want to build something in your life, you need strong individuals by your side who will level you up. You don't want to be around a girl who's going to cheat on you. You don't want to be around a girl who you can't trust. You know, spiritually for me, I want a strong woman who's going to stand in my corner and emotionally she's going to be there and I know that she's not going to do something crazy. That's how you can really mess up your life by choosing the wrong woman. You could literally destroy your life and this happens to so many men and for a woman as well. You can literally destroy your life by bringing the wrong person in your life. When it comes to that level of commitment, you got to make sure you are with the right person. And in the Bible it says, a prudent wife is worth more than jewels and it's true. And who has a disciplined spirit for when things go bad, she's not like, oh, well, I'm just going to dip out with another guy. Like, no, like that is just trash. Like get those people out of here. That is definitely worth more than jewels and gold. A lot of people don't understand. It says in the Bible that a wicked man will get a wicked female. Um, if you're wicked, you will have a wicked counterpart. You don't deserve no good if you were wicked. It just won't come to you. God will not allow that in your realm. So for you to attain such a prize, because that is a prize, vice versa, for a girl to find a guy who is truly rocking with them, that is very hard to come by in this world. And that is a prize. In order for that to happen, you have to become that person. Let's just be honest. Like, right now, do I truly deserve that type of female? Like, maybe I got some more work to do. And I'm just going to be honest about that. And when I fulfill what I got to work on, God will send that person in my life when I'm truly deserving and that's how I see it. But if you are not deserving, God will never send somebody like that in your life and you'll keep attracting and bringing in the same trash that you have always brought in. What you are is what you bring in. A lot of the times when you build yourself up and you build up the respect, boundaries, and the discipline and all these things and you feed your mind and you feed your spirit, but you'll still have people around you who ain't right for you. But now you have boundaries, you have self-respect to where there will be no relationship and you will just move them out the way, like part the Red Sea and you will find the right people. As of now and as any man should, you should just focus on your purpose entirely. Girls are an absolute distraction. Vice versa, if you're a 
girl and you're not ready to be in a committed relationship, like if you were just spreading your leg, it's obviously not fulfilling. You don't find satisfaction in that at all. It destroys your spirit. You're looking for a connection that you can never find and they don't fulfill you. So you turn to find a new person and you just repeat the cycle and it never ends. It's a trap. It's literally a trap until you figure out, hey, this is not working. And then you realize I should change something. And then you change something yourself. You build yourself up. You're ready for the next chapter of your life. I just want to wrap up this message. This definitely feels right. Way better than those clown videos that I was producing and making. Like, no wonder God was like, nope, I'm going to stop you from doing that. And now you're doing this. Like, this just feels right. It feels good. I love YouTube. I was always passionate about doing YouTube when I was a kid. And that's what brought me to this in the first place. I've always wanted to blow up. I've always wanted to do that. Now, I don't really want to be famous at all. I would rather be rich and live a low-key life. Who would want to be famous in this world? But this is what I got to do. And I'm not selling my soul for a YouTube video. And I feel like when I'm truly my authentic self and I'm self-actualizing and figuring out my own life and growing and evolving and can grow with the people behind the screen because I don't have it all figured out. I'm always constantly picking up things and just being a clown on YouTube. But you're kind of just stuck in that weird mirage where you meet up with your supporters and it's just this mask. It's just the hype. You're doing these big grand videos. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying for me personally, it just wouldn't be the greatest experience for my life. But you know, you're doing these big grand hype videos and then you meet up with people and it's this hype because that's what you produce online and there's really no connection that is genuine or authentic. When I take this route, when I'm just my authentic self, I'm bringing in genuine, valuable people to where they're going to be the same like me. So yeah, anyways, I guess that's a wrap for this video. I'm going to be doing a video every single week just to build that discipline. I'll see you guys in the next one. This video is long and uh, peace out.